For over 150 years, one geologic formation in the American West has produced far more giant dinosaur fossils than any other, the late Jurassic Morrison Formation. Exploration of the Morrison goes all the way back to the late 1800s when it served as the primary battleground in the Bone Wars, the infamous rivalry between early paleontologists Edward Drinker Cope and Othniel Charles Marsh. Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, these creatures would become household names as the discoveries and speculations of these 19th century explorers would inspire iconic images of the Jurassic, many of which still loom large in the public consciousness to this day. But even after 150 years of exploration, the Morrison has yet to give up all of its secrets. And our understanding of the giant dinosaurs and the world they inhabited have dramatically changed in that time as new discoveries continue to come to light. These days, the craggy ledges and painted badlands of the Morrison are wandered by a new breed of scientists. Interdisciplinary and collaborative, these modern paleontologists, biologists, and geologists have been working for decades to better understand the complex ecology preserved in these rock layers. And I've been lucky enough to join them. My name is Brian Ng, and I'm a filmmaker and paleo artist. And for the last five years, I've been following a team of scientists exploring and studying new remote outcrops in the Morrison Formation. This documentary is the culmination of my filming those expeditions along with more than 30 years of Morrison research and fieldwork by paleontologists John Foster, Rebecca Hunt Foster, and Matt Wadle. Together, we've been finding, documenting, and excavating surprising new fossil discoveries that have inspired a reimagining of the late Jurassic in North America through science and art. This is Jurassic Reimagined. The Morrison Formation is vast in both time and space, spanning approximately 9 million years from 156 million years ago to 147 million years ago, with far-flung exposures from northern Arizona to Alberta, Canada. When you come to the Morrison as it exists today, you really have to work to see it in your mind's eye as it was back in the Jurassic period. So we're crawling through this desert looking for clues to a completely different environment. By carefully mapping out the layers of rock exposed at the surface, geologists and paleontologists have been gradually piecing together this fascinating chapter in the history of the North American continent. The story of the Morrison begins with a warm, shallow inland sea that covered part of Western North America in the Middle Jurassic. But something was brewing just beneath the surface. Molten rock churning in the mantle was violently forcing the Pacific tectonic plate under the North American plate. As the North American plate was rippled by the impact of the Pacific plate, its cracking and buckling rock layers began forming the mountain ranges of what is now Nevada and Arizona. As the Pacific plate gradually shoved the North American plate upward, it caused that shallow inland sea to drain away to the north. As that shallow sea receded, it left muddy tidal flats, sandy shorelines, and mineral crusts which formed the base of the Morrison Formation. This series of colorful mudstone and sandstone layers is called the Tidwell member of the Morrison Formation. Similar deposition of thin layers of clay, sand, and minerals left by evaporation can be observed in tidal flats today. As the mountains in ancient Nevada and Arizona continued to grow, the climate was also shifting. Seasonal rainstorms hammered their peaks, eroding away masses of sand and gravel which cascaded in seasonal floods down these crumbling mountains into the Morrison Basin below. These sheets of sand and gravel formed what we now call the salt wash member of the Morrison Formation.
Remarkably similar deposition of layers of sand and gravel can be observed in our modern environment in broad sandy washes like this one. As the Jurassic Mountains continued to grow, volcanic activity increased, and frequent volcanic eruptions spewed fine volcanic ash across the range, choking those sandy river channels with clayey sediment. That influx of volcanic ash formed the clay-rich, painted badlands of the uppermost layers of the Morrison, the brushy basin member. Similar ashy deposits can be seen forming in modern regions with frequent volcanic activity. When volcanoes erupt, radioactive elements such as uranium are brought up to the surface, where they continue to undergo radioactive decay trapped inside crystals of volcanic ash. By measuring how much these radioactive elements have decayed since the moment the crystal formed and trapped them, geologists can determine how old these ash layers are. These ash-rich layers of the brushy basin member are the youngest layers of the Morrison, and the vast majority of Morrison dinosaurs have been discovered and excavated in the brushy basin. Most of these dinosaur quarries in the brushy basin yield radiometric dates of around 150 million years old. One such quarry is so astonishing in what it preserves that it's been made into a national monument. Hi, I'm Rebecca Hunt Foster, Monument Paleontologist here at Dinosaur National Monument. Today we're at the Carnegie Quarry, where you can see a vast amount of fossils from the late Jurassic Morrison Formation. The quarry preserves this large package of sandstone that contains some of America's most famous dinosaurs. We have Camptosaurus, Allosaurus, Barosaurus, Camarasaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, and even Stegosaurus. One of the cool things here at the Carnegie Quarry is the great diversity of dinosaurs that are preserved here. And this shows us that they would have all lived in the same ecosystem together during these Morrison formation times. While the Brushy Basin preserves an astonishing diversity of dinosaurs, especially of the giant long-necked sauropod dinosaurs, below the Brushy Basin, in the older Saltwash and Tidwell members, dinosaur fossils become increasingly rare the lower you go in the formation. So where did the famous giants of the Brushy Basin come from? How did they evolve? And can we find any connections between their populations and the changing geology and climate of the region? To attempt to answer these questions, our team has been exploring new sites throughout Utah, lower down in the Morrison. Down in the oldest layers of the Morrison, in the Tidwell member, there's only one dinosaur skeleton currently known originally discovered in 1859 and described based on just a few leg bones. This is the oldest sauropod dinosaur yet found in North America, Dystrophaeus. Our team's Morrison specialist, John Foster, has since recognized its importance and has relocated that historic quarry, and excavations are once again underway. For many years, Dystrophaeus has been thought to be ancestral to a branch of the sauropod dinosaur family tree that includes Brontosaurus, Apatosaurus, and Diplodocus, the Diplodocid sauropods. But the newly uncovered bones and teeth of Dystrophaeus have John already considering a different hypothesis, that Dystrophaeus may actually be closer to the other major lineage of Morrison sauropods, the Macronarians. This group includes the most abundant sauropod in the Morrison, Camarasaurus, and Brachiosaurus, one of the largest land animals to ever live, and one of the rarest sauropods found up in the Brushy Basin. Excavations are still underway, so for now we can only wait and see what Dystrophaeus will reveal about the origins of the giant sauropod diversity found in the Upper Morrison. Historically, dinosaur fossils in the middle, saltwash member of the Morrison, have been rare as well. But several new sites our team has been exploring are completely changing that. And helping to close the gap between Dystrophaeus and the diverse dinosaur assemblages of the Brushy Basin. All right, Ted, find the next one. We're in a good layer. In part two, we'll explore these new sites in the saltwash and reveal never-before-seen discoveries that are radically changing our understanding 
of the Morrison. Join us for part two and we'll take you into the realm of the Hidden Giants.